Hey guys, Caleb with White Metal Games here and welcome back. Today we are going to, uh, we have a special cheat code for you today. Cheat code is our short series of videos that we use to uh, not only entice clients like you to subscribe to our channel, but also just to share general ideas we have with the community uh, and hopefully to so they can use these tips uh, in their own models and conversions. Um, so today's cheat code is going to be called Wolf Claw and um, we get this request on a much more regular basis than we used to. So now that we're seeing this all the time, we thought it was about time to do a video. So the basic idea here is to do a um, Space Marine Wolf uh, Knight uh, and to essentially take the regular Power Fist and convert it into a Wolf Claw. And we recently completed a Knight a few weeks ago, just for fun. And I'm gonna show you now, this is what we did. And this is essentially what we're gonna be doing today. So here is the basic model, here's the basic power fist. So basically what this is, is that the model uh, is going to have these big power claws, um, which I think work really well for wolf claws. Um, as you can probably imagine, these are from the Bjorn set, which is the Wolf Dreadnought kit. Um, and actually it's a really good looking model, it's a good looking set, and it's an easy conversion. So this is even better. So really all you need for this is just your standard wolf claw. I've left off these panels for painting purposes. Um, I recommend you do the same. I recommend painting this as one metal assembly or even painting this as a different color. That's often seen as a different color. But leaving these off for painting purposes and sub-assemblies. We'll talk about sub-assemblies more in future videos. The big change obviously to this model are the fingers. You can buy a bag uh, or you can buy these four bits off of eBay vendors. Um, Generally, for, for next to nothing, you can usually get this for about $1.50. Even with shipping, it's $5. I recommend always combining your shipping. So buy a bunch of different things, not just one thing. So buy everything you need in one fell swoop. So um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be removing uh, essentially the lower digit from these guys and essentially taking the knuckle. And we're going to be adding it to the knuckle here. Uh, it's hard to probably see there, but adding it to the knuckle. So if you look on these models, the goal is to basically remove everything down to that first knuckle there. Um, now this is a little harder because we've already got the fingers on here. Generally speaking, I would prefer to do this with the fingers off, uh, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. So what we're going to do is instead of clip, we're going to saw. And we're going to do that because I think we will get a much, much cleaner cut overall. So I've, organ uh, I've moved my fingers in such a way that they're kind of like um, this. They're kind of, you know, in a, in, a, in a turned pattern. So that means I can't saw them all at one time. I have to saw them one at a time, and that's okay. So um, I got the first cut out of the way, and that looks pretty good, but it's not quite all the way down to the knuckle. So I'm just going to go down a little bit further. What I'm doing is I'm scoring this around halfway, uh, and then I'm just going to kind of pry the rest of it off there. Saves me a little time and effort, and I can just clean that up with a hobby knife. And I'm gonna move on to the next two. These guys are basically at the same plane, so I'm just gonna do them both at once. Okay, scored that, and scored that, that's pretty good. And I can, I can see here that I did not quite get all the way down to the nub, I was misled. So what I'm gonna do, saw it again. Now you could use clippers for this, uh, but I think that if you do use clippers, there's a good chance you're gonna damage the model. So I'm gonna recommend the saw instead, okay? All right, so that's generally about the right position I want. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, people are not going to inspect this in great detail, so that's okay. And then finally, for the thumb, same basic idea here is you're going to remove um, as much of that digit as you can. So I want to try to get it down to the, the knuckle. So normally you want this thing to be laying flat, but because this is not even, it's hard to get this thing to lay flat. Okay, so now I'm going to take, I am going to take my clippers and just clip away this extra little bit there. Nice and easy. Okay, so now I've got the basic fingers shot off. Uh, that's great. Now I'm going to take my saw away. We're done with the saw for the most part. We're going to clean these up. The bits vendors normally sell these to you, but they don't generally do a great job cleaning them, as they shouldn't, to be honest with you. I mean, if they're clipping them from the sprue, I would rather clean them myself than have them do it. So I'm just going to clean up any sort of leftover debris there. 
And so that's basically the way that's gonna work is that I'm gonna just cut it as flat as I can and I'm going to mount it to that. Um, now I'm keeping my original claw over here as kind of a reference point to remember whether or not I had to remove anything. So as I'm looking here, I see that I actually was able to leave this entire digit on there, which essentially was nice because it allowed me to hide any sort of bad cuts. So the goal is to basically attach it just like this. Um, now I'm seeing now that as I feel it up, there's a little bit of a rough spot there. So something like that. Yeah, it's pretty close. Okay, so now we just grab some glue. I'm going to attach the first digit. I'm going to use super glue instead of plastic glue. Plastic glue might be stronger, but this is not an even cut. It's not a perfectly cut area. So that's it. A little plastic glue, a little super glue on there, and that really fills in that gap really nice and well. So now I'm going to proceed to clean up these next three. So that once I've got those done, these should all be roughly the same length. So I'm not too worried about any of these being longer or shorter. I'm just going to do a dry fit and just see if it fits on there. It's pretty good, pretty good. I do think that um, taking a little bite out of the top here would be useful. So I'm just going to whittle this down just a tiny bit. And I'm doing that so that the claw rests just a little bit easier on top there. So basically it'll sort of cradle it just a bit. See? Yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Something kind of like that. I'm actually going to whittle that down just a little bit more. This is more art than science. Just kind of practicing it until you get it to feel right. And that feels pretty good. And yeah, I think we're pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to do one final touch up just on this last one. I feel like that could have been a little more even. Cool. All right, so now I'm just gonna go in there, apply a little dab of glue to all three of these. Oop, I used a little too much glue on that one. I'm gonna use a Q-tip to wick away the extra, not my finger. Try to avoid any kind of fingerprints on this particular guy. I'm just gonna mount these one by one. I'm gonna mount these in roughly the same design I had going the first time which is kind of a closing fist, which I like quite a bit. So now we're just gonna kind of play with the position on these just a tiny bit until we get them spaced out the way we want. Now, one final thing I might suggest here, and this is entirely your purview, is that you may have noticed these fingers are very, very close together. Now, you can use that to your advantage if you like. What I'm gonna suggest you do is on the inside of this thing, take a little bit of plastic glue. We use um, Tester's Model Cement. Take a little bit and just apply it between the digit. And what you're gonna do there is you're gonna basically create a plastic weld so that when these things go on together, they're actually gonna be stronger. They're gonna basically bond to each other. When viewed from the front, it will appear that the fingers are close together, but not one single piece. Um, and I think it'll be fine. So overall, it'll look like this. Looks nice, looks good. Um, but when you view it um, uh, from the back, I suppose you might see the plastic weld there, but that's totally okay. So yeah, that entire conversion took less than 10 minutes, cost less than $5, and it will lead to a very, very, very cool looking model. In fact, if you'd like to see what a model like this. So here is an example of a finished model we did. Uh, and you can see here, this is a Space Wolf model. We did this in house just for fun. Here's the wolf claw fully attached to his arm. And I'll hold this up to the other camera as well. And you can see that looks pretty good. I think overall, that's a nice looking model. Looks great. Um, and I would enjoy fielding this in a game. In fact, I have, and I would enjoy seeing this on a finished model. So yeah, um, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this look. Um, so from there, just take the claw, prime, paint, apply your final panels, and you are good to go. And uh, if you want to magnetize your model, we recommend that as well. All right, guys, well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick video. Um, if you are interested in seeing more videos like this, find us on Patreon at Patreon slash White Metal Games. You can find lots of cool quick tips like this wolf claw there. 
um, and you can see all of our video content starting at three dollars. Um, so yeah, lots of cool videos, lots of cool tips. We'll be uploading these to YouTube as well so that people can enjoy them even if they're not Patreons. But to see the full length videos and have all access to all the videos we produce, you will need to subscribe. So follow us on Patreon at Patreon slash White Metal Games. You can also see our work on YouTube at YouTube slash White Metal Games and online at www.whitemetalgames.com. Till next time. <laughs>